Hey fellow explorers, we're going to be going to Fukushima, Japan for five days. This is a quick travel vlog just to show you the highlights and we're starting this trip here in Asakusa in Tokyo. We're going to take the Tobu Sky Tree Line, the Revity Train. We're going to head inside to buy some tickets. Two tickets to Aizu region in Fukushima. We're on our way. Now that we got our tickets, we just go up the escalator to where the tracks are. But before we got to the tracks, we had to get our tickets checked and stamped by the conductor, and we noticed they had this really cute bear mascot, and we asked if they sold them, but they told us... They already oh. sold off. Aw, and we were sad. We got to the tracks a little early, so we got to see the incoming train come in, and it looked really futuristic, like something out of Star Trek. But our train was supposed to depart at 11. Hey, and you know what time it is? It's exactly 11 o'clock, and you know what? We're moving. It's on time. One of the things I love about taking trains in Japan is just admiring the scenery going by, and this started right out of the station. On the right-hand side is the Asahi building. That's the one that looks like a beer mug with foam on top. And then right after the bridge, we could see Tokyo Sky Tree, Japan's tallest building. Now that we were seated comfortably, it was time for us to eat their traditional Japanese train food, Ekiben. It's a lunchbox that's specially packed to be eaten on the train. We got a couple of the special ones in Asakusa. The one on the left is rice with beef on top, and the one on the right is a seafood rice. As we got outside Tokyo, the scenery changed quite a bit from high-rise buildings to rural farmland. And about halfway through the trip, the train actually separates. Half the train goes to Nikko, which is a really historic town in Japan, and then half the train continues on to Fukushima Prefecture. It was about this point that our view started to get quite snowy. So after three hours and 20 minutes, we got on at 11. We got here at 2.20 p.m. We arrived at the final stop, Aizu Tajima Station on that train right here. So as soon as you come into Aizu Tajima Station, the first thing you'll see is some merchandise right here. Come in and let me show you this merchandise. This is the character of this particular railway that operates here, the Aizu Railway Company. We've got this little girl right here, and this cat is a station master of a different station that we're gonna see later on. But what I really wanna show you here, and this is really unique, this region is known for its sake. And right here, this is a sake vending machine. Uh, you can pick your sakes up here, and it comes out of these big bottles of sake dispensed right there. To get to the train station from the hotel, because it was snowy and snow and luggage wheels don't work all that well, we took the shortest taxi ride we've ever taken in our life. The hotel was about two blocks away from the train station, but we opted for the taxi so that we weren't pulling our luggage through snow. I think the total taxi ride was about 90 seconds. Uh, and by the way, they're, they're totally cool with a ride like this in Japan. And I just, I love the taxis in Japan. So after the train, we checked into our hotel and this one, it's outside of Tokyo, and so it's a bit bigger. Topher likes it better already. It's this kind of brown, woody atmosphere. Uh, but one of the things I find interesting, there's a switch right here to turn on and off the refrigerator. I also find it interesting that the mirror is just a mirror that's here on the desk, and it's a handheld clock. Well, if you're looking for a hotel in this region, you can check this one out. I think it was built just a year and a half ago. Um, and it kind of reminds me of like a Spring Hill Suites two-story hotel, though oddly enough, no elevator if your room's on the second floor. For dinner, we went to Leon, a restaurant that specializes in a local Fukushima delicacy, horse sashimi. So it's customary to say kanpai, drink it up at the beginning of a meal. So the owner's gonna do it with me. All right. Kanpai. Kanpai. And it means to drink all at once, so it's pretty good from a local sake brewery. And a neat part about sitting at the bar is we could see the sashimi being artfully prepared. We decided to go for the omokase, which essentially means chef's choice, and he served us seven different cuts of horse. And you know, before we went to this restaurant, I wasn't so sure whether we were gonna like horse sashimi or not, but it was actually pretty good. I've had horse sashimi once before down in Tokyo, and let me tell you, this was much better. And by the way, if you wanna know more about any of the restaurants or attractions in this video, I'll put links in the description below with their websites. And and for food, in just a couple weeks, we'll have a whole video coming out about the best eats in Fukushima with more detail about all these places we ate. Stay tuned for that. Or if you're from the future, it might be out right now. If so, the link's in the description below. So day number two, we were very sad about day number two because we lost the footage from day number two. We went someplace really cold, the camera started acting up and the memory card, it's dead. But I'm gonna tell you about what we did on day number two and insert some pictures and also some GoPro footage and things I got on my cell phone. Uh, so we started the morning at the Aizo Shuzo Sake Brewery. Here's actually a bottle of sake that we got from that brewery. It was an amazing behind the scenes tour of how sake is made in a 330 year 
old sake company. The building itself is 150 years old and the current owner of it, he is a ninth generation owner of this. has been passed down for generations. This is one of the sakes we got there. One they just made this month. We really enjoyed it. But making sake, they showed us how they take the rice and they put it in this like big rice steamer. Uh, it takes about an hour to steam this rice. And then the process goes in two different ways. They take the rice, turn half of it into some mash, and then the other half of it, they ferment that rice directly by essentially putting some koji, they call it, but it's basically like moldy rice onto the rice. That's an area they don't take many people, and so it was really special to get in there, and I'm glad I still have some cell phone footage from that particular room. The owner was really cool, and the sake was really quite delicious. And much of it, they only sell here in the Fukushima region. And so if you come to Fukushima Prefecture, seek out some of the Aizu Shuzo sake. After learning all about sake, we went back to Aizu Tajima Station and took a really cute one-car train on our way to Oichi Juku, which is this really cool mountain town with these 48 preserved houses. I'm gonna tell you more about this on day four because the town was so cool, we revisited it to get more video footage of Oichi Juku. But on day two when we were there, it was the snow festival, so they had some really cool fireworks over these snowy houses. And we got to meet the wife of the owner for Oichi Juku's famous Negi Soba restaurant. What's Negi Soba? Stay tuned for day four. So after we went to Oichi Juku, which was totally freezing by the way, we are now in a really nice onsen hotel. And this onsen hotel has a private onsen bath that you can reserve, which is really nice because we don't have to be naked in front of other people. We can just kind of be here on our own, which is pretty nice. And it's really cool because we get to film in here that we've never got to do in an onsen before. If you want to see more about this, well, I'm going to have a full review on this hotel. You can check it out later. Rest assured and know we are nice and toasty now. It's good to defrost after that deep freeze at the winter festival. The onsen bath that you can reserve privately in the evening is right here in this building overlooking the river. The public onsen bath that you can't reserve is a little further down on the back side of the hotel. So one of the best parts about staying in any onsen hotels is definitely the dinners. And so if you stay in an onsen hotel, make sure you book the room rate that includes dinner. Today we have a traditional kaiseki meal, which means it comes with lots of different courses. So how do I know what we were actually eating? Well, the landlady of the hotel was nice enough to come by at the beginning of our meal and explain what we had in front of us. And then one of her staff members came in as they brought us the successive courses to explain what those were. And the final course dessert, a cheese souffle with pudding, a little thing that looks like a cake, a strawberry, a very orange orange, and a cup of tea. Now after checking out of Okawaso where we really enjoyed our stay, we headed over to the Aishinamaki Onsen train station, the station where cats work. And by the way, the whole station is super cute because the station, it's got cats everywhere. But it's not just pictures of cats, it's actual cats. The station master of this train station is a cat. His name is Love, and he patrols the station five days a week from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're here at 11.30. It's clearly Labuchan's lunchtime. He wants to nibble on some of this grass before he heads back into the station. After about a 15 minute station patrol, it was time for Labuchan to head back into the station. It was also time for us to take our train onwards to Kitakata, the ramen capital of Fukushima Prefecture. And in true Japanese style, Labuchan waved us goodbye as our train took off from the station. Bye, Labuchan! We took another one of those cute one car trains on the Aizu Railway for about 45 minutes just in time for lunchtime. We are in Kitakata at the Kitakata Ramen Festival. This is where ramen geeks get together to geek out on ramen. We have six different types of ramen that we got to sample right here. It was really awesome because the organizer of the festival came and talked to us about these ramen. I feel so much smarter about noodles. And if there's one thing that I've learned, the Kitakata noodles are some of the best and they're the most slurpable too. After completely geeking out on ramen and filling our bellies with lots of noodles, we switched our mode of transportation to a rental car and headed over to Samurai City, Aizu Wakamatsu, to visit Soruga Castle, the only castle in Japan with red roof tiles. Why are they red? Because they've got iron in them and that helps prevent the tiles from cracking in the cold, harsh weather of this region. But the best view of the tiles is from the top of the castle. You can get up close and personal to the red roof tiles and you can really see that they're red from up here. On the way to the tea house, it's really interesting because the plants here, they've got little roofs on top of them to keep the snow 
off the plants. That's how you know it snows a lot here when the plants have a roof. One of the things you'll see in this region, because it snows so much, you'll see water in streets and parking lots that just run all the time to keep them from icing up. After visiting the castle, we stopped in Nakajima for dinner. They specialize in one of this region's iconic cuisines, sauce katsudon. It's flavorful. Katsudon usually isn't um, sweet, but because this has the sauce on it, it has a sweet taste to it. Every restaurant in this region serves a different kind of sauce katsudon, different types of sauces, sweet, sour. One of theirs here was kind of a French-inspired katsudon. This restaurant's currently in second generation. The owner told us it was his father that invented this French-inspired sauce katsudon. And the one your father invented was this one here? Yeah. This is It's day number four, and Tover has finally come out because it's finally not snowing today. We made it back to Oichijuku. This is what I said we were here two days ago, but it was so cold our memory card bit the dust, and so we're really looking forward to exploring this town again. We're actually going through it again to capture it on video so that you all can see it in our Things to Do video. All right, so Tover, let's go. So after exploring Oichijuku for a little bit, we came back into Misawaya, the restaurant that originated the Negi Soba. The Negi, the leek, and the Soba right here. And it's a really neat restaurant. It's in one of those old houses that you saw out there. And this is a buckwheat noodle that you don't eat with chopsticks, but instead you eat with the leek. This is like an eating experience. I've never eaten anything with a leek before. Actually, I did two days ago when I was here, but before two days ago, I didn't. Mmm. Good noodles. And a spicy chopstick. You don't usually get to eat your chopsticks. That would probably be rude, but you do get to eat this one. After walking around the snow in Uichijuku, we wanted to warm up a little bit, and so we stopped at the Yunokami Onsen train station not to take a train, but to enjoy the free public foot bath. I will point out the water is pretty hot here. <laughs> My foot looks like a lobster I now. Red <laughs> sure, I should say, this is the line of relaxation. You notice? Regular skin, lobster skin. Ooh, but it's oh so soft. <laughs> So after Uichijuku, we came to some place even colder. We came to some place, the fourth largest lake in Japan, that has splashing ice. And this splashing ice is so amazing that a TV crew from Japan, from the Fukushima region, came to videotape me looking at this ice. And uh, hey, if you're watching this in Japan, well then you can see this on the local news. And these guys are really pros, let me tell you. And I'm impressed with this guy. He's holding that big camera, walking backwards, and doesn't slip at all. Walks about twice as fast as I do. So I got something to learn from these guys. The splash ice here reminded me of something from the Disney movie Frozen. You know, something that the Snow Queen would conjure up when she's feeling a little too cold. What's really neat about the snow in this region is how soft and fluffy it is. And in Japan, it's often this way. But look at how powdery this is. <laughs> that was fun. I want to do that again. <laughs> We've come up to a higher elevation at the Bondi Lakeside Guest House, and we're doing snowshoeing. So we've got the whole crew <laughs> shoeing up to go some shoeing. Take a look at my shoes down here. You know, I've always said I have big feet, but now my feet are even bigger. And by the way, apparently my feet are so big that those boots I'm wearing, the instructor here had to go to multiple ski resorts in the area to find my size. Apparently this size, not so useful in Japan. This is really beautiful. It's like a winter wonderland. I would normally be looking at you and walking backwards, but we can't walk backwards in the snowshoes. I thought the snow was fluffy before, but this snow, this snow is so fluffy. So we're here from the transition of land to lake and our guide, Gen, has assured me that he tried this this morning and did not fall through. So again, I'm trusting you, let's go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> oh yeah, you can actually see right over there that there really is lake down there and water. And you know, I don't know, like if I did fall into this lake, I bet this video would get like a million views just like that. This is really neat out here because it's, it's just, it's open. It makes me want to, and I can't walk backwards, it makes me want to hold up my hands and like yodel, you know, like a yodel hee hoo And it echoes. So at this point, I just realized that I'm actually walking on water. Now I've always wanted to walk on water, 
because I hear there was someone famous who did that. And I, I also, down there it's Mount Bandai, which is the famous mountain of the region just in that pack. There's some ski slopes over there. And I've always wanted to boldly go where no one has gone before, except again reminded me I, I shouldn't go too far because the, the center of the lake isn't frozen as much as this part is. So maybe, maybe I'll turn back now. <laughs> Again, is not just a really cool snowshoeing guide. He's actually the owner of the Bondi Lakeside Guest House. We're here at the reception, but it's kind of this cool guest house. So it's also got a bar. So I want to invite you over here again to the bar, and we'll continue the interview right here because I think it's a cooler backdrop. Uh, so how long have you owned this guest house? One year and a half. A year and a half? Uh, yes. Uh, and how many rooms do you have? Uh, five rooms. And of course, what I think is special is the amazing view, right? It's like it's right on this lake. Yes. Yeah. But the room is typical Japanese style, so okay. many guests from foreign countries enjoy the Japanese, enjoy the style, Japanese room. style room. Well, that's awesome. Well, we didn't get to stay here on this trip, but maybe when we come back, then we can do a, a Topher review. You haven't met Topher yet, but he's my traveling panda. I'll, I'll introduce you to him later. Okay. <laughs> All right. Again, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So now that we've transcended our being, we've walked on water, stood on a lake, dinner time in Fukushima City for some Enban gyoza. This is disc gyoza, and um, it had two gyozas in the middle, but I've already eaten them, I couldn't wait, and uh, it's really quite good. Fresh made to order, and this is a specialty of Fukushima City. You'll see more about this in my Things to Eat Fukushima video coming out in just a few weeks. Now, if you're from the future and you're watching this like a month after I uploaded it, my video's already there, just go watch it. After eating this delicious gyoza, we got to meet the owner of the restaurant and I wrote him a little note that said, To Terui, I heart your gyoza, love yellow production. So look for this on the wall when you visit Terui. And we got to take a pretty cool picture together. After dinner, it was time for some relaxation, something really unique about this restaurant. It's in an onsen town, and so it has a foot bath right outside the restaurant. I could not pass up the opportunity to enjoy another soak in a foot bath. It's day number five, our last day in Fukushima. We spent the night at an onsen hotel, spent a morning dip in the onsen hot spring, and we're gonna go explore this onsen town. So we're outside of the onsen hotel now. We are in Izaka Onsen uh, town that's just about 20 minutes from Fukushima City, Fukushima Station. It's a small little onsen town, but it's famous for really hot water. So, you know, walking around this town, you might think this is a pedestrian bridge. This is not. This is a car bridge, and it's not one way. It's actually a two-way bridge. So if you're driving, be careful, because you'll have to wait for other cars to pass. Watch, here's a car going to go over it. Look how narrow that bridge is. That's a car from the hotel. That's why he goes so fast. If you're driving here, you'll go a lot slower. Uh, when we're shooting this, there's flags here for the 2020 Olympics uh, and baseball with this cute little bunny is going to be played here in Fukushima City. After the onsen town, we went to pick some strawberries. By the way, not just pick strawberries, but eat strawberries. We're in the strawberry farm, 1,500 yen. All the strawberries you can pick and eat for one hour. They've got two varieties in here, big strawberries and small strawberries. Eh. Mm. We just picked them um, didn't wash them and ate them because they're inside of this place. I'm finally warm on this trip. It's heated 25 degrees Celsius. These strawberries, they're really sweet. If you come to Fukushima, you should check these out. They're amazing. By the way, there's bees in here because they need to keep these things actually growing. And the bees, they really, they really like yellow shirts. But don't worry, these, these bees don't sting. And uh, here's one for OC Girl. So after strawberry picking, we headed from Fukushima City into Koryama City. Koryama City is the second biggest city in Fukushima Prefecture. And you might think that Fukushima is the biggest. It's actually the third biggest. It's the capital. Iwaki is the biggest. That's along the coast. But we came here to Koryama to get cream box. Cream box is uh, some bread with some cream on top of it that's sweetened. And this is the original. It's been served since the 1970s in the city. There's lots of bakeries that serve it here. You can find it at the train station if you come, but there's also many seasonal varieties. So this bakery that we're at, they have uh, chestnut and maple. They have this one, which looks really interesting, which is edamame in the middle around that. And uh, edamame, but this is, uh, going to be sweet. Uh, and then for Valentine's Day, they have a special chocolate one, and it has a heart on it. Aww. Our last stop in Fukushima Prefecture in Koryama was to visit the Big Eye Building. This is the tallest building in all of Fukushima, 24 floors. And what's special about it is it has the world's highest planetarium 
on the 23rd and 24th floor. But the 22nd floor has amazing sweeping views of all of Koryama. You can see a lot of the major highlights in Fukushima, the mountains around, the Shinkansen coming through. And from up here, Tofer and I are really able to think about how great these five days were. I'd encourage you, if you're coming to Japan, definitely think about coming here. If you're watching this right as we publish it live, this is the beginning of our Fukushima series. We're gonna have videos coming out about things to do, things to eat, and travel tips coming out over the next few weeks, so definitely stay tuned. If you're from the future and you're watching this in the future, well, those videos will already be out. You'll find a couple of them here on the screen that you can watch. You'll also find links in the description below. But until then, Topher and I are gonna look out this window and contemplate just how great our five days in Fukushima was.